Hi, I'm Becky. Welcome back to Minerva. And today I'm here with another sew along video for you. So today I'm going to be making the Lotta dress by Tilly and the Buttons, which is this pattern just here. So it's a pattern for a really nice floaty, easy to sew, easy to wear dress. Um, and this is um, a sewing pattern that is um, friendly for the beginner sewist as well. So if you are a beginner, a beginner, this might be um, a great pattern to pick up. Um, there's a couple of different views and I think I'm going to make the mid-length short sleeve version. Um, so really excited about this. Just a quick note on sizing. So the Tilly and the Buttons patterns come in size brackets 1 to 10 um, and the size 1 is equivalent to a UK 6 and that's a 30 inch bust, a 24 inch waist and a 33 inch hip. And the 10, size 10 bracket is equivalent to a UK 24. Um, and that is a 48 inch bust, a 42 inch waist and a 51 inch hip. Um, so those are the sizes we've got available. Um, so without further ado, let's get started with the sewing. So for this project, you will need your paper pattern cut out or traced to your preferred size. You'll need some fabric and this pattern could be made up in either knit or woven fabrics. I've decided to go for a woven fabric and I've chosen this linen viscose blend fa um, fabric from Lady McElroy with this amazing big floral and fruity print on it. I think this is going to be such a fun version of this dress. You'll need some interfacing so I've got a pack of fusible interfacing just here ready to go. You'll need some elastic, some safety pins, and you'll need some thread to sew your pattern up in. So I've got this Guterman Sew All polyester thread in the shade 18. All of these items will be linked down below. All of these items will be linked down below for you. And remember to join the Minerva Craft Club to get 10% off all your purchases for your first 12 months of membership. Okay, so when you're done cutting out, you should have your back bodice piece, your front bodice piece, your front and back facing pieces cut once on your main fabric and once on your interfacing. Two of your skirt pieces, one to be used for the front and one to be used for the back. And then optionally, um, if you want to add them, two of the pocket pieces. So go ahead and make sure you've got all those pieces cut out, make sure you've transferred all of your markings, and then we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first step of this project is to go ahead and match up the sticky bobbly side of your interfacing with the wrong side of both the front and back facing pieces and apply that fusible interfacing with a hot iron to the facing pieces. Okay, so next we're going to do some stay stitching. So on both the front and back bodice pieces, you're just going to do a line of stitching um, around the neckline. So you're going to go from one shoulder to the middle and then stop and then the other shoulder to the middle and then stop again so your two lines of stitching should meet in the middle and you're going to do that at about a one centimeter seam allowance so do that on both the front and back bodice pieces and then on the skirt pieces um, you're going to do a line of stay stitching about one centimeter down the whole diagonal seam um, and do that on both sides of both skirt pieces as well and that will just stop those pieces from stretching out of shape as we're sewing them. Okay so once the stay stitching is all done the next step is with right sides together to lay your front bodice over the back bodice um, and match up using the um, seams and the notches the shoulder seams and then stitch those in place using a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And once those seams are stitched in place, you're then going to press them and finish them in your preferred method. So I'll be using an overcasting stitch and overcasting foot on my sewing machine, 
but you might use an overlocker if you have one or a zigzag stitch, um, whatever your preferred method for finishing your raw edges is. Okay, so when the bodice shoulder seams are all stitched together, the next step is to do the same to the facing. So again, match the two facing pieces up with right sides together um, and stitch along the shoulder seams at that 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. When you've done that, press those seams open and then you're going to finish the whole outer edge of the facing without trimming it. Um, so go ahead and do that and then we'll attach this to the bodice. Okay, so when that facing is all sewn together and finished, the next step is to match it up with right sides together to the neckline on the bodice. So you need to lay your bodice out as flat as you can. You're not going to be able to get this neckline to sit completely flat. So just lay it out in a way that makes it easy for you to be able to match it up. And then using the notches and the side seams, match this neckline facing up with the neckline on the bodice and pin it all in place. You might need to use quite a lot of pins where it's not completely flat. Um, and then sew that on at 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so that's the facing all attached and then I've gone ahead and cut that seam allowance down um, and then cut notches into it all the way round to help it turn um, better the other way. Um, so go ahead and do those two things. So trim down that seam allowance and then cut the notches. And then what you're going to do is press the facing and the seam allowance both away from the bodice and then with take it to your machine and then do some under stitching so you're going to stitch the facing to this seam allowance on the inside and that just helps it to sit nicely um, on the inside of the dress. Okay so once you've done that under stitching and you've pressed the facing towards the inside uh, this is roughly what your bodice should be looking like. So really coming together. Um, so the last step just to finish off that facing and help secure that in place is to just very carefully do a couple of stitches in the ditch um, to help hold that facing in place on the inside. So what that means is just very carefully stitching into this seam here so the stitches will be hidden in the seam but it will just catch the facing underneath and hold it in place on the inside of the garment um, so that is the last step to finish off the neckline okay so once you've done that stitching in the ditch your neckline is all finished so now you're just going to turn your bodice so the right side is out again and then you're going to match up the underarm and side seams um, using the corners and notches, match them up, pin them in place and sew them in one continuous line from the underarm all the way down to the bottom of the waist um, at five eighths of an inch. Once you've done that, finish your seams in your preferred method again um, and then press them all towards the back of the bodice. Okay, so the next step is to start working on our pockets. So. The first few things you're going to do for the pockets is finish all of the raw edges all the way around as I've done here. Um, so finish them all the way around and then you're going to press all the edges in by about a centimetre and a half. So starting with the long edges, press them in a centimetre and a half and then the short edges do the same and then it should look something like this. Once you've done all of that, what you're going to do, just realised my pocket's upside down, so that way, <laughs> um, what you're going to do is top stitch the top fold in place. Um, so the top fold is the one nearest the top fold line from the pattern. So you have three fold lines um, and the top is nearest the uppermost fold line. So top stitch that top fold in place. Okay, so once you've done that top stitching, the next step is to take your pocket over to the ironing board and you're going to fold it right sides together along fold one, which is the bottom fold line. Um, so line that up and then press that fold in place. Okay, so that's the first step. So then it should look 
like this. Next, you're going to find fold line two, which is the middle of the fold lines. And along fold line two, you're going to fold this back the other way. and press that fold in place like this and what you should notice is that on the wrong side that fold is then sitting in line with fold line three so it should look like that so go and press that one in place okay so then your pocket should now be looking something like this and now the last step of assembling the pockets is a long fold line three, which should now be sitting in line with the top of this fold you've already made. So flip it back over to the wrong side and then you're going to flip this top section over the top. And then press that. And then when you flip your pocket over to the other side, you should have a nice pocket with a nice fold at the top ready to go on your skirt. Um, so that's that one. And then here's the other one I've already done. So if you are doing two pockets, this is what you should end up with. Okay, so once your pockets are all pressed, the next step is to take one of your skirt pieces um, and it's up to you which one. If you're using a plain fabric or a fabric with a very small repetitive pattern on, it probably doesn't really matter. If, like me, you're using a fabric with kind of a big motif pattern, um, then just have a look at them both um, and decide which one you think you prefer for the front. Um, and I picked this one just because I really like the way the pattern has fallen around the edges. Um, so I picked this one for that reason. Um, but just go ahead and pick one of your skirt pieces. And then where your pocket markings are um, on that skirt piece, um, just line the corners of the pockets up with those markings. And then you're going to pin these in place and top stitch them to what will now be the front of your skirt. So those are what those pockets look like once they're finished and you can see I've just sewn a triangle in the corners just to reinforce um, those pockets and make sure they're nice and strong and durable. Um, so that's a really good idea to do especially on woven fabrics. Um, so you just start here, stitch up, across and then along and around the rest of the pocket and then the same on the other side. Um, so that really reinforces them. If you're working with a stretchy fabric, you can just do a really compacted zigzag stitch at the top um, and that will have a similar effect. So the next step then is to lay your back skirt piece down and then your front skirt piece, which now has your pockets on, you're going to lay over the top and then match up the side seams on both sides. Um, and stitch them in place at five eighths of an inch seam allowance um, and then press and finish those edges in your preferred method. Okay, so once your skirt pieces are sewn together, the next step is to attach the skirt and the bodice together. So fold them both right sides out and then making sure you line up the front bodice, which has the slightly lower scoop at the neckline um, and the front skirt which has the pockets on um, if you've added those um, is to kind of roughly line up the waistline doesn't matter if it's not exact at this stage um, and kind of pop the bottom of the bodice waistline inside the skirt waistline kind of like that and then you're going to flip the skirt over the bodice so the right sides are together. So just kind of gently keeping hold of the bodice, flip the skirt over the top. And there is quite a lot of fabric, so just make sure you find the other side of the bodice. Where's it gone? There it is. Um, and then kind of keeping hold of all the layers, flip it. So now the bodice is inside the skirt um, and the right sides are together. 
Um, so once you've done that, you can go ahead and um, match up the seams and the notches of this waistline and then sew that waistline in place. Do note that because we need a slightly bigger seam allowance here um, in order to create the channel for the elastic, um, so you need to sew this instead of your five eighths of an inch seam allowance, you're going to be using a two centimetre seam allowance, so it is slightly wider and that is what allows you to create the channel for the elastic um, in a moment. So match that all together and then sew it at a two centimetre seam allowance. Okay, so that's the bodice and the skirt attached then and here's my seam. So I've gone ahead and finished that seam together and then pressed it towards the skirt and it's actually sitting really happily this way which is nice. So the next step is to pin this seam to the skirt and then do another line of stitching close to this finished edge. Um, and what that is going to do is create the channel for the elastic to go through in a minute. Um, what you are going to need to do is leave a about a five centimetre gap, um, maybe close to one of the side seams. Um, to be able to feed your elastic through momentarily. Um, so you leave yourself a gap um, big enough to do that and you can always mark that with two pins so you know where to start and stop. Um, it just makes it nice and clear for you. Um, so go ahead and do that. The only trick with this is making sure that you don't sew the dress closed. <laughs> so you need to make sure you're only catching one side of the dress and not the other side when you're doing it. Um, so just be conscious of that when you're pinning and stitching um, and go ahead and create that elastic channel. Okay, so there's that channel all made and then I've left myself an opening just here um, in order to allow me to thread my elastic through. So the next step then is to take your elastic um, and then figure out the, the length of elastic you need. Um, and there's a really handy guide in the instructions for this dress of how to figure that out. So you need to measure your waist um, and it's easiest to do this in centimetres to use the formula in the book. So my waist is about 28 inches, which works out roughly at 71 centimetres. Um, so then you times that by 0.9 um, in order to remove 10% um, for wearing, for stretch. Um, and then you add 1.5 centimetres um, for an overlap to tie the, uh, stitch the elastic together. So using that formula, my measurement was 65 and a half centimetres roughly. Um, so that is the length that I cut my elastic to. So go ahead and figure out the length for your elastic. Um, and then to insert this into the channel, you're going to need two safety pins. So go ahead and attach one of the safety pins um, to one end of the elastic. Don't you just love how bright and colourful these safety pins are as well? They're so nice. Um, so attach one to one end of the elastic um, and then keep another one on standby for a minute. Okay, so to start feeding this through, what we're going to do is using the end that you have the safety pin attached to, um, is to just start feeding that into the channel. And the trick with feeding elastic into a channel like this is to make sure that um, it doesn't get twisted as you go. So just keep an eye on that. And when you fed it through a little bit, um, on the other end of the elastic, you're going to want to attach your other safety pin. Just like that. And then pin this to the fabric near the opening and that will just stop that end of the elastic getting lost in your channel. So go ahead and do that and now that's nice and secure, um, just carry on feeding the other end all the way through that channel um, and then when you get to the end just double check that it's all nice and flat and not twisted anywhere. Okay and once the end emerges from your channel, once you thread all your elastic through, just double check all the way around that it's not twisted and it's sitting nice and flat um, and then you can go ahead and remove the safety pins
and then overlap them by about um, a centimetre and a half um, and then using two lines of straight stitching close to each edge um, just stitch them together in place. Okay so once that elastic is sewn together it will look something like this and then it's just a case of pulling the elastic into the opening and then top stitching that opening closed and then that will be the waist channel all finished. Um, once you've done that um, and it's probably a good idea just to go and do these all these things at the same time so top stitch that shirt it's then just the case of doing the hems so on the bottom of the skirt and on the um, ends of the sleeves um, the instructions call just for a single fold hem so um, finish all the raw edges in whatever your preferred method is um, and then just fold them all and press them all once um, and stitch them in place. Uh, the instructions say um, to do about two centimetres for the skirt hem and about a centimetre and a half for the sleeve hem but obviously go and try your, your dress on um, and check that you're okay with those, those hem sizes if not make the adjustments that you need. So once you've done those bits um, that your dress will be finished and I'll show you what my finished project looks like in the next shot. So here is my finished dress looking all lovely and swishy. I love how it's come out, it's so comfortable to wear and the skirt is just so super swishy and it's got these great big pockets. It's just brilliant, I really love this pattern. If you have a go at making this pattern for yourself, please make sure to create a profile on Minerva and share your make with us as we love to see what you guys make. Thank you so much for sewing along with me today and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!